Welcome to our American Journal of Sports Medicine's 50th anniversary celebration. I'm Michael Angeline, Electronic Media Editorial Board member at AGSM. Today, I'm speaking with Dr. Jan Ekstrin. Dr. Ekstrin is a professor within the Department of Medical and Health Sciences at Linköping University in Linköping, Sweden. He is considered the father of modern prevention in sports medicine and is the founder and leader of the UEFA Elite Club Injury Studies since 2011. He and his co-authors published in AGSM in 1983, the first RCT demonstrating that it was possible to prevent sports injuries and had the most cited AGSM article in 2011 entitled Epidemiology of Muscle Injuries in Professional Football. Welcome, Dr. Ekstrand. Thank you for joining us. I hope you and your colleagues have been staying safe during the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you, yes. As a part of our celebration campaign, we are highlighting the most cited article of each year throughout the journal's 50 year history. Dr. Enstrom, what led you to focus on musculoskeletal injuries and prevention, starting with your initial RCT in 1983, your epidemiological study in 2011, and your other published works? Well, uh, the, uh, the main idea is to uh, keep the players, the soccer players on the pitch to avoid injuries. And, and uh, of course, we need to study risk factors and so on. And, and you need the first part in injury prevention is always to see what is the problem, what are the, what are the problems. And we found out that the big problem in, in, in football, both on males and females, are the muscle injuries. Actually, the muscle injuries are... And they constitute uh, one third of all um, time loss injuries uh, in, in soccer, and it causes one fourth of all absence from training and matches. Now, based on your initial paper and subsequent work, you've obviously focused a lot on muscle injuries. How has your research impacted the field of sports medicine and football in particular? Well, uh, I would say that. Uh, the, the main thing, the main problem is that muscle injury on the field is quite different to muscle injury, which you see in a hospital or, or a, a healthcare environment, because uh, in the hospital, you only see very severe injuries with total ruptures, and so maybe you need surgery. Uh, almost 90% of all injuries are treated on the sports field itself. And the knowledge about how to treat and prevent is on the pitch, on the field people, not in the hospitals. Now, as a follow-up, given the technological advancements with data analytics, is there anything you would do differently or wish you knew with respect to your initial RCT, the 2011 paper, or any of your other published works? Well, uh, already in, in, in the RCT paper in 83, there was one point, there were seven points in prevention. One point was uh, communication with coaches. And that is the point that is still very, very hot, very valid. If you want to avoid injuries, you need to have the coaches on board because the coaches in soccer teams and in many other sports like American football as well. And so they decide the load on the players. They decide so much about which players to buy and recruit and, and so on. So you need them on board. And, and the, the thing is that at elite football, normally, in, in athletes, if you want to avoid injuries, to prevent injuries, you provide the athletes with a training program, increased strength, increased flexibility, increased coordination. That is fine. It is very good for amateurs and low level, and it's probably enough. It's not enough on elite level. You, there are other factors like what is the coaching style of uh, the leadership style of the coaches? How is the communication within the team? Uh, uh, and what is the load on the player? How many matches do they play, etc.? cetera? Uh, what is the, about the well-being of the athletes or about the players? Do they have good sleeping patterns? Do they have... Uh, um, good relations and so on. Those are factors on the absolute elite level that we need to consider if we want to avoid these injuries. Do you think while, while the players are being captured in terms of all their data, the acceleration, the deceleration, all their, their metrics that are being recorded, has that helped or any, any, in any way just to reduce any muscle injuries? 
Now, I'll be provocative. No, not really. There are lots of resources put on uh, on sport science and, and uh, GPS measurements and so on. Uh, but the problem we have in medicine is that we talk about movement. Uh, for example, high speed running, which, uh, but in football, it's not about isolated movement, it's actions. And actions is a movement with a purpose. So if you have a, 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 an attacker in football going to attack the goal in high speed, it needs to consider what do the opponents do? Maybe they have to stop or, or accelerate. And so that's quite different to running straight ahead. We, we have a problem in, in medicine that we still measure uh, singular movements. And because that's easier and so a higher reliability and so on. But the coach's mantra is a training in soccer or at American football or any sport needs to mimic the competition, the match. And that is uh, that is actions, not movements. So we, we, we need to improve there, but that is the key. Getting the coaches on board, talking their language, and, and um, uh, trying to measure actions that are really there on the matches, which are those causing the injuries. And just going off topic a little bit, I know in your 2011 paper, you highlighted that almost a third were lower extremity injuries in, in, in soccer players or football players. Any role now with biologics or what are your thoughts about biologics to try and get players back in, in terms of injecting those in, injuries or hamstrings or, or gastrocnemius muscle injuries with uh, PRP or, or any of the new wave um, sort of modalities? No. That is not a key. And we have shown at the elite level that that really does not help. It's another way of, from a hospital point of view, look at athletes and much more other factors. It's biology is important because it takes time for healing, but you cannot help with different injections and so on. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not the way forward. Now, um, as sort of a closing uh, comment, what suggestions would you have for, for new authors based on your research experience evaluating muscle injuries throughout the arc of your career? Well, uh, for any 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 one want to do research on these uh, things, should uh, focus on the field, should learn from the field, should cooperate with the field. Uh, so you get really sport specific. You have to understand how the sport is carried out if you want to avoid injuries. Perfect. Thank you, Dr. Ekstrom. Thank you for your time and dedication to musculoskeletal injury prevention. He and his co-authors published in 1983 in the American Journal of Sports Medicine, the first RCT demonstrating that it was possible to prevent sports injuries, entitled Prevention of Sports Injuries, supervision by doctor and physiotherapist. Additionally, he and his co-authors had the most cited article in 2011 in the American Journal of Sports Medicine entitled Epidemiology of Muscle Injuries in Professional Football. Welcome.